Cool, so I'm here today thanks to Dork's Music and I've got with me the Yamaha 221 bass clarinet. Um, so this is Yamaha's student level bass clarinet. Um, and the sort of people that might be interested in this, uh, saxophonists and clarinetists who are looking to add kind of an extra doubling instrument um, into their arsenal of instruments and tools available to them. Um, and this instrument, I would say, really is pretty much perfect for that job. Um, there are quite a lot of variations of bass clarinets that you can get if you're looking to buy one, um, and they vary hugely in price as well. One of the first things you'll notice if you start looking at bass clarinets is some of them go down to low E flat, and some of them go down to low C, so they've just got a couple of extra notes on the bottom. Um, you will find the low C models tend to be the professional models, and you tend to pay a good few thousand pounds for those extra couple of notes. So for most people, unless they are planning to become a professional bass clarinetist, um, you can get away with a low E flat and it's incredibly rare you're going to run into any problems where you're missing those extra notes. Um, and this Yamaha model is um, down to a low E flat. The other thing you'll notice is they're made of different materials. Um, this is very similar to B flat clarinets. You find the professional models tend to be wooden, whereas the student ones are made of um, different kinds of plastic essentially. Um, and this bass clarinet is actually made of an ABS. Um, and it does seem to be actually um, a very nice material. It's incredibly three blowing, this bass clarinet. I'll just point out one other feature of these. If you were to kind of buy or rent one of these instruments and you got it for the first time, something you might notice um, is on the joints um, between the different sections of the clarinet, it's got some plastic rings um, in place instead of where you'd normally have cork. Um, it's just a different style of putting it together. Um, so if you do see this, don't think there's kind of extra plastic on it and try and take it off or anything. You just twist it together like normal. Um, I think the idea behind it is it's a little bit more hard wearing than cork, um, so you're not going to have to keep changing the corks on them. So this model is kind of Yamaha's student model. Um, it's sort of the cheaper end of bass clarinets, but it's still kind of a, a reasonable investment. Um, you will find you can get some very cheap bass clarinets, but they tend to be incredibly stuffy um, in the high register. So I tend to avoid those. I would say this is sort of the, the one of the best value models and it's not gonna break the bank, but it's gonna play really decently um, and last you a really long time. Um, and it is kind of perfect for people who are doubling I'll just play you a little bit on this so you can hear how it sounds. And this is um, perfectly comfortable in jazz or classical setting. Uh, I'm going to play you something slightly jazzy to start off with. <laughs> So you can hear it's a really lovely three blowing instrument. It's got a nice kind of big, rich sound. Um, I should say as well, of course, because it's a Yamaha instrument, it comes with a Yamaha mouthpiece. Um, and they're perfectly decent mouthpieces. They're great for starting on. Um, I have for now put on my usual mouthpiece just because it's what I'm used to playing on. Um, so I've got a Bandoran mouthpiece on here at the moment. Um, but you can hear it's got that nice, rich sound um, in the lower register. Um, one thing you find with bass clarinets is some of them suffer from being a little bit stuffy in the top register. And it's also a problem lots of people have when they switch onto bass clarinet. You find particularly clarinetists going onto bass clarinet um, try and play with their normal clarinet on, which tends to be a little bit too tight and you get a kind of squeezed, slightly pinched sound. So if you are switching over from clarinet to bass, just make sure you keep your embouchure slightly more relaxed. You want to have a more relaxed lower jaw um, and you want to keep a nice open throat through a big rich sound as well. Um, but this bass clarinet has a very nice actually upper register. I'll just play you um, some high notes just so you hear it. This. <laughs> So you can hear it's got that nice clean sound to it. Another thing just to point out about, about bass clarinets, if you are trying the bass clarinet for the first time, um, is when you get above the top C on the instrument, 
um, there is actually an extra key on bass clarinet. So normally, if you were playing your top D um, on a clarinet, you'd have the bottom two fingers on the left hand, top finger on the right hand, um, and then usually your E flat key on the right hand as well. On the bass clarinet, if you look here, so you've got your normal kind of B or E key at the top, and then underneath, um, you've got an extra little one there. And on bass clarinet, when you go D and upwards, we normally press down that key as well. Um, and it just helps with the intonation, it helps control it. So you'll see if I play a chromatic scale going upwards, you'll see once I get to the, in fact, the C sharp and upwards, I move on to that little key there. So yeah. So that's just one thing to be aware of if you're trying out the bass clarinet for the first time. Um, so these instruments, they are available from Dorks Music both to rent and to buy. Um, they're a really good investment if you've got the money to afford to buy one. They're brilliant instruments, last forever, hold their value nicely as well. Um, but if you don't want to make that kind of commitment, because they are still quite a lot of money, um, you can rent them as well. Um, and that gives you a chance to really try them out properly and then at a later date, if you decide you want to, um, you can buy one. Um, but anyway, that's about all I've got to say about this Yamaha 211 bass clarinet. Um, really kind of an ideal upgrade bass clarinet. Um, but I'm going to finish off by playing you a bit of bark on it. Mm -hmm.